You are no longer a burden for us. We are unable to care for you at this time. Why do you say that? How am I going to support myself on my own? If I'm not blind, it's expensive to live with three people. Being the two of us makes life simpler, and we want to start living more pleasantly today. Don't meddle with our personal affairs. I had nothing to think of after being informed all of a sudden. How about getting in touch with your grandparents? Perhaps they might set you up with a place to reside. I moved to live with my grandparents as a result of this. After 12 years, my parents unexpectedly moved in with me. As a CEO, you launched your own business. We're hoping you can look after us as well. Why are you speaking like this now? We are no longer related. It is not necessary for me to look after you. Is that how you speak to your parents? It astonished my parents to be addressed to in such a manner. My name is Margaret, and I study at a junior high public school. Since birth, I have had vision impairments and am blind. My parents adored and looked after me when I was tiny in spite of this. They stood at my side, encouraging and supporting me. I become depressed sometimes because I can't see, but when my parents were there, I was able to get back upbeat and certain that I could go through any challenges. My parents helped me even though I couldn't see, and they were always kind to me. They never talked angrily to me back then, even though my blindness must have given them trouble. They were kind and understanding even when I vented my emotions and felt low from time to time. As soon as you encounter difficulties at school, let us know. We are always available to help you. I appreciate you stating that. Don't worry, things are going nicely for the time being. But I'll make sure to let you know right away if anything comes up. Never fear. Every day I will transport you to and from school. Regardless of my workload, I'll always find time. Never be afraid to seek for help if you need it. I'm grateful. Although I selected a rather distant institution, you fulfilled every one of my dreams, and I'm overjoyed. As you face more everyday challenges than others, it is only fitting that we provide you with this level of assistance. However, you shouldn't be concerned about standing out from the crowd. To be honest, there are moments when I doubt my abilities. I have depression at least once a month. However, having you two around helps me get through those moments as well. I'm happy you feel that way, Mom and Dad. We apologize as your parents for any inconvenience we may have given you. You don't need to worry. We'll do all in our power to assist you. Mom, Dad, it's nobody's fault that I can't see, so I'd be happy if you could continue as usual without any worries. Obviously, although it would be more convenient to be able to see, I don't worry too much because I value your compassion more. I've been able to maintain my optimistic attitude and make a lot of friends thanks of your encouragement. I sincerely appreciate your kind support at all times, you too. Thanks to your assistance, I seldom ever feel inconvenienced, despite the fact that I cannot see and so face several problems. In addition, my buddies at school are really understanding, so I seldom run into problems. Everyone always offers assistance when there is a problem. I believe that I shouldn't depend too much on other people, yet because I am visually impaired, I will always require assistance from others around me. My pals are always nice to me, even if I feel horrible about it. Margaret, please let us know at any time if you run into any problems. You can trust us. It must be difficult for you to go to school without your parents. I appreciate you all. I'm having fun at school. Without everyone, it would have been really challenging. Margaret, I know you face a lot of challenges on a daily basis. Feel free to contact us at any moment if you need assistance. It's not necessary to push oneself to discuss topics that are uncomfortable to discuss. Don't worry, Dad and Mom. I feel free to talk to you all about anything, including sensitive subjects that are difficult to bring up with the professors. I become a little shy around you, Margaret, when you say things like that. You've faced several challenges due to your blindness. It helps me understand that vision is a gift that should not be taken for granted. Although there are obstacles associated with being blind, I'm grateful for the friendships I've formed. Maybe we wouldn't have gotten along if it weren't for my illness. 
Upon reflection, there are a few advantages to being blind. Margaret, I believe it's amazing that you can maintain such a cheerful attitude. You must be surrounded by a lot of wonderful individuals. Please let me know as soon as possible if you run into any issues. As always, thank you. I will always be grateful for everyone's generosity. Graduation day drew nearer as the days passed. I was devastated to graduate because I had benefited so greatly from everyone's assistance. I was abruptly brought in for a conversation by my parents when I was feeling this way. I was a little nervous when my parents were called because we usually had conversations in my room. I wondered what the summons was about. When I got to my parents, they started talking earnestly. Margaret, have you thought about what you want to do after graduating from junior high? I'm hoping to attend high school. If I could attend my buddy's high school, it would be ideal. In my opinion, public schools are more affordable than private ones. Even public education is expensive. You will need to get employment after graduation because we don't have that much extra money. I apologize for putting too much pressure on you, but I'm determined to finish high school. Please know that once I graduate from high school, I'll get employment and reimburse the school payments. It is beyond our means. Our decision is to assist you exclusively through middle school. We have no desire to help you finish high school. I really appreciate the support you've given me so far, Mom, Dad, but I think graduating from high school will increase my future income when I start working. We just cannot afford to send you to high school, no matter how much you protest. The only thing left to do is for you to vacate this place if you refuse to work. Why have you suddenly become so aloof? Since we've always been close, I'm surprised by how abruptly your attitude changed. Middle school is compulsory education, so we had no choice. Graduating from high school won't make much difference in your salary if you don't work. It's as if there was no point in having you. I've never heard such a thing before and I didn't know you felt this way. What was all the kindness until now? Please let me go to high school. We've endured whatever dissatisfaction we had because it would be troublesome if you failed during compulsory education, so there's no need to be kind to you anymore. Suddenly, my parents became strict, as if they were completely different people. The kindness and gentleness they had shown before disappeared so suddenly that I couldn't understand why. I couldn't keep up with how much they changed, and I was even more confused because they didn't explain anything to me. I don't ever recall being told to work after graduating middle school and being suddenly told to do so left me unprepared. My parents didn't consider what I said, and I was at a loss for how to respond. Until then, I had thought my parents were truly wonderful people. I was even grateful to be their child, but suddenly it was the complete opposite. Why did my parents have to be them? In the meantime, I decided to give it some time calm my feelings, and then talk about high school again. Dad, Mom, I want you to listen to me. I plan to start my own company in the future and make a lot of money. I want to give back to you too as a way to show my gratitude. You're blind. How can such a reckless dream ever come true? We're in this world. Is there a blind CEO? That's right. Becoming a CEO is impossible. Once you graduate from middle school, start working immediately and hand over all your salary. That's what we expect from you. I've been supported by you both and my friends, so now I want to be someone else's support. That's why I want to create a place where visually impaired people can shine. For that, I want to study business management in high school and college. That's impossible, so give up on such thoughts. There's no way we can see that happening. It's enough if you just get a normal job. Why don't you understand even after all we've said? Mom, Dad, why can't you understand my feelings? Before, you were always on my side. You would have surely supported this dream, too. We already talked about this. We've been patient only until compulsory education ends. We're saying you won't be able to go to high school, let alone college. That's out of the question, so you should start working immediately after middle school ends. Why don't you understand? I really want to start my own company and contribute to society with people who have visual impairments. 
If you have any affection left for me, I wish you would watch over me a little longer. When I become a CEO and start earning a lot, I'll be able to give back to you in a much bigger way. What will you do if the company doesn't succeed? If it fails and you end up in debt, are you planning to push that responsibility onto us? How selfish can you be? We will never approve. There's no other way than working after middle school ends, so thinking about anything else is pointless. If you really say you won't work after middle school, then you have no choice but to leave this house. Why is it like this? What am I supposed to do if I leave this house alone? I can't even focus on my exam studies. What should I do? Why don't you contact your grandmother? Maybe she can help you find a place to live. Studying isn't a waste after all, but if you want to stay in this house, the only way is to work after you graduate middle school. My parents wouldn't listen to me at all, and I was deeply hurt by their attitude. The most shocking thing was that they even told me to leave the house. They suggested relying on my grandparents, but in reality I wasn't very close to them, and it seemed they also found my visual impairment troublesome. They were never kind to me, so I never intended to rely on them from the start. Still, I couldn't give up on starting my own business, and I faced a situation where I must seriously consider my future path. I couldn't discuss this with my friends, and I had to figure it out alone. It was the first time I had something I couldn't talk to my friends about. I had no idea what to do next and felt completely lost. Feeling uneasy, I returned home and tried to open the door, but for some reason, the key wouldn't go in. Wondering why, I decided to press the doorbell. Soon I heard my mother's voice. Mom, it's me. I can't get the key in, and I can't open the front door. Could you open it from inside? Of course, the key doesn't fit. We changed the locks on the front door. Why should I have to open it? I have no intention of letting you in the house, and I'm not going to give you a new key. You changed the locks? I had no idea. What do you mean I can't enter the house? Mom, what are you saying? We don't need a burden like you anymore. We can't take care of you any longer, so don't come back here. Why would you say that? How am I supposed to live on my own if I can't see? It's too sudden to understand. A burden? Are you really saying that to your own child? I don't consider you my daughter anymore. You don't need to think of us as your parents either. Just find a way to live on your own somewhere we don't know. Is that really how you feel? Are you saying it's my fault I can't see? I wished I had been born without any disabilities just like everyone else. Why do I have to go through this? It's because you keep saying things like wanting to go to high school or start a business, which make no sense. If you had just worked as we told you, we wouldn't have had to kick you out of the house. You've brought this on yourself. Then my father's voice joined in. Living with three people is economically tough. It's easier just being two of us, and we want to live more comfortably from now on. Don't interfere with our lives. Being told this all of a sudden, I can't think of anything. Why don't you contact your grandparents? Maybe they can arrange a place for you to live. Am I really being so unreasonable just for wanting to go to high school? I have to endure this treatment. I can't understand what you are saying at all. It turned out that the front door locks were intentionally changed. I never imagined I would be treated like this. The support until that time was just because they expected me to work, and as soon as I expressed a desire to continue to high school, their attitude changed completely, as if it had flipped 180 degrees. Certainly, having a disability would make me more troublesome compared to a child without one. But I never thought I would be abandoned by my own parents if they had told me this from the start. Maybe I could have prepared myself mentally, but being told so suddenly, there's no way I could handle it right away. It seemed my parents were nearly unanimous in their thinking, but I still held a strong desire not to give up on my dream of starting a business. Of course, I fully understood the difficulties and barriers associated with having a disability, but my desire to realize this dream on my own remains unshaken. There was also anxiety that I, being blind, might be ridiculed for attempting this challenge, but still I had no choice but to move forward to achieve my dream. 
I decided to take on this challenge to fulfill my dream. As the first step, I thought it was necessary to arrange a place to live, so I decided to ask if I could stay at my grandparents' house. Upon arriving at my grandparents' house and pressing the doorbell, my grandmother appeared. Margaret, is that you? What's the matter? All of a sudden, were we expecting you today? I'm sorry for coming suddenly. I've been kicked out of the house and have nowhere else to go. Can I stay here for a while? Being told this all of a sudden, she replied, it's difficult to take care of someone blind. It's impossible for us. I don't know what you did, but you should apologize properly and ask to be let back into your home. I've talked about it many times, but we're at an impasse. I've been practically thrown out, and I can't even think of them as my parents anymore. Please let me stay here. I won't be a bother to you, Grandma and Grandpa. Even if you say that it's impossible for us, if you're going to resent someone, resent your own parents. Aren't we all family? Do I have to be treated this way just because I'm blind? What am I supposed to do? It's easy for you to think that way. You don't understand how hard it is to live with someone who is blind. We're old too. We're already overwhelmed with just ourselves. If even you abandon me, I won't be able to live on. Is it really so hard to live with me? I do everything I can on my own. No matter how much I pleaded or explained my situation, my grandmother's attitude did not change. She had no intention of taking care of me. Watching her maintain this stance, I struggled to understand how she could say such cold things to her own granddaughter. While I understood that living with someone with a visual impairment is very difficult, it should not be my own fault that I have this disability. If I had recognized earlier what I should do on my own, the situation then might have been quite different. Thanks to the support from my parents, I was able to get that far. Having that support suddenly disappear was extremely painful and hard for me to bear. Realizing I could no longer rely on my family, I reluctantly decided to ask my friends for help. As I walked, I was overwhelmed by memories of recent events, and my emotions started to whirl so intensely that I couldn't move. Unable to walk properly as my body wouldn't cooperate, I finally called a friend and asked them to meet me at the nearby station. You called me out of the blue. I was surprised. What happened? I've never seen you so down. Something serious must have happened, right? I was suddenly kicked out by my parents. I was so desperate that I went to my grandparents' house, but they wouldn't let me in either and said horrible things. I was at a loss. I can't believe it. To do such things to their own daughter and granddaughter, they're not family. Let's go to my house for now. You can stay with me for a while. I can't do that. I'll try to persuade my parents one more time. Even if it seems hopeless, I don't think they'll understand but I have to try. I think that's best too, but from what you've told me, it sounds difficult. Changing the locks on the house isn't normal. It doesn't seem like something you just think of all of a sudden. They must have been planning it. Yeah, it's unthinkable, really. I still can't believe they've changed so much. I used to think I was lucky to be born to parents who always put me first. The parents you knew before were just pretending. You might not want to believe it, and it might be hard to accept, but I think this attitude now is their true nature. It's tough, but I guess I have to accept reality. I know it might be a bother, but can I lean on you just a little bit? I'll start working part-time once I go to high school and contribute to living expenses. Why don't you live with me then? I was planning to start living on my own when I got to high school anyway. It's not a big place, but it should be enough for the two of us. I'll help you out if anything happens. Thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm sorry to drag you into this. Is it okay with your family that I come to your house? My dad and mom love you too, Margaret. They'll understand if we talk to them. We can commute together from my house until you graduate from middle school. I really have nothing but gratitude. I'll make sure to do everything I can on my own and help out if your parents find it tough. Just let me know and I'll leave right away. I wouldn't allow that. I've always been an only child, so having you around is like having a sister, which makes me happy. Thanks to my friend, I was able to find a place to live. 
I had never imagined being kicked out of my family home, and I was shocked by the suddenness of the event. Could a middle school student imagine being abandoned by their family? Yet I was facing such a situation, and I felt the pain of potentially causing more trouble to my friend and their family. I strongly felt that I must become able to support myself. To do that, I needed to find ways to become independent. Specifically, I was thinking of starting a part-time job to earn my own money and reduce the burden on my friend and their family as much as possible. I was increasingly facing a situation where I could no longer just rely on my friend's help. Months have passed since I was kicked out, and during that time, there was absolutely no contact from my parents nor any news from them. My friend was also surprised and confused by this situation. Even though they kicked you out, aren't they worried about where you're living? If you're not at your grandparents either, normally anyone would think there might be something wrong. It's really terrible that they haven't contacted you at all. I think so too. Since my parents and grandparents were estranged, they probably don't think I met my grandparents, but still they should at least call to check on me. That's how it was, huh? You weren't lucky with either your parents or your grandparents. It's amazing how well you have turned out. You did not stray off the righteous path despite being around such people. I've decided to stop thinking about my family. It was an unpleasant experience, but I think I can become a person who understands other people's pain. I'll use this as a springboard to achieve my dreams. I really admire your positivity, Margaret. I wish I could live like that. I think I'd be hurt and give up. I wasn't blessed with family, but I have a friend like you. That's why I'm going to study hard to repay you and your family. You don't need to repay me. We're friends, and it's natural to help when someone's in trouble. Like I said before, I'm happy to have a sister. After living with my friend for a few months, I was able to graduate from middle school. Eventually, I firmly decided to go to high school, studied hard, and entered as a scholarship student. As a result, I was able to enjoy my high school life without worrying about tuition. If I had followed the path my parents suggested back then, I wouldn't have experienced the fulfilling days I have now. Thanks to my friend's help, I was able to grow and learn in this environment, and I am truly grateful for that. Since entering high school, I've carried a strong determination to achieve my dreams, no matter what. I devoted myself to my studies every day and worked part-time, making the most of my time and efforts. My hard work paid off, and I earned a recommendation for university during my high school years. With this recommendation, I was able to move on to university smoothly without taking entrance exams. Additionally, the university scholarship program relieved me of financial burdens, allowing me to focus entirely on my studies, which was a tremendous help. In this way, I was able to walk the path I had always wanted. Twelve years have passed, and suddenly my parents came to see me. The suddenness of it left me completely stunned. We finally found you. Why didn't you call your parents even once? You're still the same as ever. Oh, it's you who didn't call. Who? After what you did, you have the nerve to show up now. What's wrong with visiting our own daughter? Have you forgotten how much we supported you? You've completely changed since we last saw you. It's been 12 years since I was kicked out of the house. I will never forget that incident. At that time, being thrown out meant I no longer had a family. From your current perspective, such things might not seem like a big deal anymore, right? I heard through the grapevine that you've started your own business and are successful. You're a CEO now, aren't you? So what? I don't need you playing parents now. You have no idea how much that ordeal hurt me. As my parents came to know, I have indeed founded my own company and have been successful as its CEO. I majored in business administration in college, and now I run a business that serves people with visual impairments, which is progressing smoothly. My income is likely much higher than if I had just gotten a job after middle school graduation. However, this is the result of clawing my way up from being abandoned by my family, not because they were positively involved. Now that they claim to be my parents, I cannot forgive them. The friend who supported me during those times works at my company under better conditions. 
It's my way of giving back to her. No matter that we're blood-related, I no longer want anything to do with my parents. I don't intend to have anything to do with you anymore, so don't come back. We can live as strangers. Just because I've succeeded doesn't mean I owe you anything. Don't be so cold. We helped you, remember? Have you forgotten that you told me to work instead of going to high school and kicked me out? And now you dare to act superior. You're beyond insensitive. There's nothing more to discuss, so please leave. We're in trouble now. Your father lost money gambling. We just need enough to cover that debt. Can you pay it? Don't make it sound like I'm the only one with debts. You not only racked up debt, but also cheated. We were supposed to pretend to be a couple just for today, and now your actions have ruined everything. Why bring that up now? Can't you do anything right? You're the one who spoiled the plan. It's only right that you get divorced. It appears that both of my parents have accumulated debts and have grown tired of each other, leading to their separation. Honestly, their troubles have nothing to do with me, but knowing they are struggling gives me a slight sense of relief. Somehow it makes me feel a bit better. I can't believe they pretended to be a couple just to show up in front of me after hearing rumors about me. It's too convenient to ask for money just because we're related by blood. I prefer to repay my friend and their parents to the best of my ability rather than my own parents. Talking to these people is a waste of time, so I decided to call security to have them removed. At that moment, my mother gathered all her strength and pleaded with me. Please, from now on, I will be by your side to support you. Let's live together. I no longer need a mother. I have a housekeeper at home, and I'm happily married. You're married. You didn't even report it. You have to contact your parents when you get married. What were you thinking? You told me to live as a stranger, so I was adopted by my friend's parents. You're no longer my parents or family, so there's no need to report my marriage to you. I guess we did do that. Are we really beyond help? My parents grew pale and walked out without saying anything, realizing there was nothing they could do. Their debts must be causing them both great distress. The way they expelled me and only came to me when they were in difficulty is ridiculous. I don't plan to support my parents going forward. Whatever the case, it appears they also went to my grandparents, who similarly seem to have turned them away. Though I kind of expected that, thinking about their predicament really makes me laugh. My friend chuckled too when I told her about this. They received what was due to them for mistreating you. I'm starting to feel better. When they arrived to the firm, I was taken aback. My blindness allowed me to handle the issue with composure. It may have been a different story if they had shared my belief in and support for you. It brings me great joy to collaborate with you, Margaret. I wouldn't be who I am now if it weren't for you back then. With your help and that of your parents, I've made it this far. I sincerely appreciate it. I'm appreciative as well. I'll be there for you as we go on. Despite the fact that you are the company's CEO, please don't hesitate to contact me for assistance if you need it. My parents ended up suffering because they belittled me and cut me off. However, human nature is resistant to change. Our family bond would have ended sooner or later, even if I had stayed with them and obeyed my parents. My parents finally had no choice but to file for bankruptcy since they were unable to pay back their obligations. After that, they found themselves living alone as they had no one to turn to. However, I recently learned that I am expecting, therefore I believe I have a more fuller life ahead of me. I believe that the reason I am happy right now is that I have a strong trusting and loving link with my spouse, and I feel like that bond is getting stronger every day. Looking back, I remember being quite nervous about my future after middle school. Looking back, it almost seems like a lie how anxious I was at the time. I understand that my present level of satisfaction is a result of both my own efforts and the encouragement of others around me. There will undoubtedly be a number of obstacles and problems in our path, but my objective is to work with my spouse to overcome each one. In order to create a happy family and go on with a bright future for my child, I'm willing to take on any task.